Before we get to today's episode, I want to tell you about Scout Media Group. Scout Media was designed and built to get listing leads. We apply the same metrics we use for radio to Facebook ads. We target a very specific demographic, age, gender, income, and homeownership. And as a full service agency, we offer everything from first class creative and production that actually drives results. It's critical that you have both a mobile and digital strategy. And frankly, most people are just blowing it when it comes to marketing and getting in front of the right kind of prospects. For as little as $5 a day, you can have a marketing channel that's always running in the background. If you're interested, send me an email and we'll see if you're a good fit. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go! Yeah! Hey, everybody. What's up? How's your day going? How's your week? Um, It's the middle of summer. Hopefully, you guys are killing it out there. Now, uh, before we get to today's episode, um, real quick, I just want to tell you what's up with me. Uh, We are this week, this Friday, I'm taking off, hitting the road, doing the annual old family a road trip, right? What's more Americana than that? So um, we're leaving San Diego, heading up to the Oregon border and uh, doing stuff along the way. I think we're going to uh, Monterey, Carmel, San Francisco, uh, Fort Bragg, up into the Redwoods, um, and then uh, maybe up to Crescent City and then, and then jam over to Tahoe and then Mammoth and then back. So um, if you're at along the way of any of those stops, let me know and uh, maybe we can meet up and uh, and I'll be Facebooking it along the way. So if we're not Facebook friends, uh, let's be friends. Um, OK, here's the deal. Today's episode, I brought on an investor. This guy over the course of his career has bought and sold, you know, a couple two, three thousand houses. Um, he also has a podcast. So why I brought him on is this. You can buy real estate with other people's money. You just need to find the deals. And you guys are in the enviable position of seeing deal flow all the time. And here, let me tell you something that I've said a couple times before, but you know, I'm going to say again, real estate is the only game where insider trading is legal. You can't do it with stocks, but you can with real estate, right? You can get the inside dirt on something, know where the deals are, know where all the, 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 the everything is before you put any money down. So um, we should all be looking for cash flow, looking for real estate uh, deals to buy for ourselves. And again, if you don't have money, that's fine. Money is everywhere. All right. That's what we bring on. That's what we talk about. I can tell you um, that, uh, you know, I am always looking for guests that can drop nuggets that you guys can implement this week, right? Now, there are some stuff that this guy talks about for sure, um, but I was hoping to get a little more tactical than we did. But, but it's definitely worth the listen. Um, okay. Um, if you haven't, go to superagentslive.com. Uh, check out the Grow Your Business tab. Um, subscribe to the show if you haven't. Download, download my free ebook. Why not? Um, join the conversation on Twitter. My handle is at superagentslive. Hashtag unpack that idea. All right, let's get to it. Get my coffee out of the way. Today on the show, um, we're doing something a little bit different. Now, here's the deal. You guys are out there earning money. But are you creating wealth? And I will tell you that, and if you, obviously, you guys should know this, but real estate is the one thing where, I don't think there is another industry where more people have gotten wealthy. I don't know what it is. It's real estate. Now, here's the thing with real, here's what I love about real estate when it comes to investing is that real estate is the only industry where insider trading is legal, right? You can't do it in the stock market, but if you find out, something about the neighbor down the street, you can capitalize on it. Now, that's what we're going to talk about today. Today's guest is Rod Cleef. He's an investor. He's bought and sold you, you know, a couple thousand homes. He has his own podcast. We're going to talk a little bit about that. So uh, I'm thrilled to welcome Rod Cleef. Rod, thanks for taking the time. 
Hey, Toby. Thanks for having me, buddy. Appreciate it. Sure. So, so before we get to what you're doing and all the stuff that uh, they have done, um, take a minute, tell us a little bit about who Rod is, and then we'll get into what you're doing. Sure, sure. Well, uh, I'll take you back. Uh, when I was 18, I got my real estate broker's license in Colorado. And what was unique about Colorado was at that time, you could actually go all the way to the broker level uh, through education. You didn't have to have experience. So I got it right when I turned 18. I was in the paper. You know, it was a big deal for my mom, but that was about it. And, uh, and, I, and I sold real estate, or I thought I did. You know, I, I put a bus bench down at the end of the street with my picture on it. And, and I made 10 grand my first year, which, you know, back in seven. And then my second year, I made 15 grand. Then my third year, I I started buying and selling houses, and I made over 100, like I don't know, 110, 120 grand. And so, you know, I found my niche. And uh, you know, I think I'm sure your listeners know that the the agents and brokers that are hugely successful are the ones that find a niche. And my niche was for properties and foreclosure. And so. You know, I'd, I'd seen that the broker owner of the real estate company that I worked with, even though I was a broker, I went I went to another aid, another co- uh, real estate company. He was buying it, making a ton of money flipping houses. So, you know, I, I decided to start buying, and I ended up buying 500 houses in Denver at a buy and, as a buy and hold strategy, and. Uh, you know, had those for quite a while, and then uh, ended up buying a couple hundred of them in Memphis, uh, which I don't really like to talk about. I had a bad experience there, but uh, it was, I call it a seminar. That was a seminar for me. But uh, then I bought over 1,300 houses in Florida, all buy and hold. I did a little bit of flipping, but it was mostly buy and hold. And I am not advocating that to your listeners. Uh, what, 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 what happened was I also had some apartment complexes, uh, and when 08 hit, I got my clock cleaned. And... My apartments did just fine, but my houses didn't do well. And for for, a, some, for several reasons. One, I'd refinanced some of them. Uh, but bigger than that was the fact that taxes and insurance are very high here uh, in Florida. And it was just hard to really cash flow, particularly when things tightened up. So, you know, I, I'm a big advocate for multifamily because my multifamily did just fine uh, for a whole lot of reasons. And... Uh, so that's kind of my story. Now, like you said, I've got a podcast and I talk about multifamily real estate investing and I absolutely love it. Sure. OK, well, hold on. So, I mean, that's a great story. And I, and I think that when people hear it, you know, you know, they, uh, I think a couple things, right? They can be inspired like, wow, this guy, you know, he's bought a couple thousand homes. You know, he was he wasn't, uh, you know, uh, what, three or four years into it. He, you know, he went out and bought 500 houses. I think the challenge for people, the disconnect for people when they hear that is they're like, oh, that sounds great. I can learn all the mechanics from Rod, right? Rod knows how to do it. But the the key component that's missing for them is money, right? Like th- that's where people get stopped. So how, okay. how did let's, you? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that because I didn't have money. Okay. No, what, what I did was I had, I had confidence. And honestly, that's what took the first few years for me was building confidence. And that confidence, that confidence didn't come until I had knowledge. So the first thing I tell people is get the knowledge, go, you know, go to a course, get the book. Books, get the knowledge and, and go out there, of course, and kick the tires, which your listeners obviously are already doing every single day. But, you know, th- with that comes confidence and with the confidence comes your ability to influence. And so those houses I bought in Denver were all with partners. OK, I didn't put up the money. My partners put up the money and I ended up with half the deals. I ended up ultimately buying most of them out. But, you know, that's you don't you don't need money in this game and that's yeah. the beautiful thing and and your listeners because they're already in the business already you know have that confidence and they have you know they they're they're all in sales they have the ability to influence so they have the ability to go out there and find the money and be congruent about uh, you know the deal because they're they're knowledgeable. They're experts. They're they're already you know they they've got a leg up on someone that's just an investor because because of the you know the fact that they're in the business. Right. So and well yeah. and I and, and I look I, I I tell people that all the time. I mean money is everywhere. I mean mo- there's right. so much money around that I mean it's a joke. But what right. what the 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 thing that is scarce are deals. Right. So and I'm an investor. Um, that's how I got into this game. And and I can tell you that if somebody found a deal and brought it to me, I'm all in, right? Like, you know, right. if it makes sense, I'll do it. Sure. So, so, so maybe can we talk about some practical steps, right? Like, so, so number one, well, get the knowledge, gives you confidence, you know, then you influence, but how do we go and find those, I guess, first deals and then, and then find the investors to, to partner well, up with? I got to tell you, who's better positioned to find these deals than your listeners? 
I mean, they're they're agents and brokers. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. And they're out they're out there dealing in it every day. So you know. Uh, talk about being perfectly positioned. I mean, who do I go to f- to find deals? I, uh, the bulk of the deals that I've found have been through brokers. Mm. So, you know, develop those relationships with, with if you're in the residential game, develop those relationships with, um, you know, the, 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 the brokers that are marketing the multifamily properties. And, and, and but, but even more than that, you know, you're going to, I'm sure that your listeners stumble across deals and maybe it's not just multifamily, maybe it's single family deals that are phenomenal, um, that, that make sense. But, you know, like, like Kiyosaki talks about, and I know, you know, you quote him and, and, and I've read every book he's ever written, you know, you're self-employed unless you can walk away from your business and having it, have it grow while you're gone. And so, you know, anybody that's an agent or a broker, if they get hurt, you know, God forbid, or sick or whatever, or can't work for any reason, their income stops. Yep. And and I, they're perfectly positioned to capitalize on, I mean, what else can you buy that someone else pays for? Yep. And, right. and so, and so, you know, you guys, it, you guys that are out there buying and selling, I mean, I'm sorry, that are, that are brokering deals, you need to be doing your own deals because there's nothing stronger than cash flowing real estate. And, 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 and you guys are going to know what's a good deal and what's not. Now, I will tell you this. I will tell you this, and this is really important. I believe there's a contraction coming. So I would not be focused on value. I would be fo- if, you, if you guys are thinking about getting into this you know, uh, real estate uh, as, a, as an investment strategy for cash flow, you focus on one thing, and that is just that cash flow. You don't, you know, you don't look at a deal that, hey, you know, this deal sold for a lot more money a few years ago and I can get it for this now. That's irrelevant. What's relevant is what it'll cash flow because that's all that matters in this, in the, in the, in the in investment real estate game if you're buying and holding. Right. I agree. I agree. And, and I want to talk about the contraction, what you think about it. But I'll tell you this. I think for, for these people, um, I think it starts with a mindset. Now, and I'll tell you a, a perfect example. You know, somebody that listens to my show, and I can actually coach this person for a little while. Um, uh, and he's in Canada, and he found a deal. We started talking about some of the things he had, he had listed. He had a property listed, and again in Canada, um, it I think it was like a hundred and forty grand. But the thing kicked off twenty eight hundred bucks a month. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, why are you not buying that? And he's like, oh, it just never occurred to me. I'm like. Uh, you know, and, and I didn't pull the triggers in Canada. It's, you know, it's a long ways away, and I just I don't need, know anything about Canadian reels. But but again, I think you know these guys need to get in the mindset of looking for deals, right? Looking for that cash flow first, and then and then and then being able to you know once they see a deal, then try to go out and and execute on it. Absolutely, and 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 not only are they fi- you know you guys that are listening, you're not only are you getting exposed to deals, but you're getting exposed to investors. I'm certain of it. I mean, you know, investors buy from real estate agents and brokers. Capitalize on that. That guy you just told me, that deal you just told me, he could rent it for 2% of what he paid for it. That is always a good deal. Right. Okay. So, you know, like if you can buy a property just using simple numbers for 20 grand and you can rent it for 400 a month, buy it. Those are, that's always a good deal. So, you know, that's, that's my point. And, and to, to, to go out and make a few thousand dollars or even 10,000, whatever it is, on that deal versus have that cash flow for life. I mean, duh. Right. You know, don't don't go for the quick buck. Go for I mean, that the, the go for wealth. Go for long-term wealth and protect yourself. I mean, again, you know, everybody thinks nothing nothing will ever happen to them, you know, that they they can't get sick, they can't get hurt, but you know, think you got to think about retirement too, right? I mean, if you're if you're an agent, I don't know too many uh, real estate companies that have like a pension and a retirement plan. I think there may be a couple of them out there, but, but, I don't know but any. right. Well, so my point is you got to do it for yourself. And, and the sooner you do it, the, 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 the sooner that property's free and clear and it doesn't get any better than free and clear. Right. So, so let me ask you like, like in terms of Look, you can see a deal. I can see a deal. But again, if people have never done it before, they may look at something. And the only thing, the only lens that they can maybe see is like, oh, in 06, it was worth this. And then, you know, you know what I mean? Like the value well, piece. Of that's it. how a lot of investors that get in trouble look at a deal. Right. But but, you know, and that's why I said the first thing they should do is educate themselves. And there there's some good programs out there. There's some good podcasts about, you know, about um, investing and um and and 
you know, books and courses, but, but you got to educate yourself. And, you know, when I, I coach people too, sometimes, and, and I, I tell them there's two things you need to be doing. One, you need to, you need to educate yourself. Like I just said, the books, the courses, whatever, get out there and learn the bit, learn the investing business, the, the, the cash flow business, not, not buying and selling real estate. Learn, you'll, you'll know that piece of it, but there's a lot more to it. There's management, there's, you know, uh, evaluating a deal, there's evaluating a market, which, which again, your listeners are, are going to be a leg up on most people, but, but, Learn that, but while you're kicking the tires and evaluating cash flowing property, and again, my I put my vote in for multifamily, and multifamily is a little different than than houses. So you got to get the education, and if they focus on cash flow and they educate themselves and they develop the relationships with brokers that specialize in this, you know, they're perfectly positioned to find money through their investor database or through, you know, just, just the fact that they're an expert already in this, in this field. It's, it's very doable. It's so, very, so, very doable. Just, just, just in terms of back, back of the napkin math, right? I'll tell you about the last deal that I got. So, so it's, uh, um, uh, it's a commercial piece of property and I got a great, great deal on it. But, but I, when I did the math on it, I realized that at, at the, that, um, here's what I like to do, right? I want to put a tenant in there and I want to just collect money. I don't want to uh, every year, 18 months, find a new tenant. So for me, I will purposefully um, put the rent at 10% under market, right? So they're getting that's a, a great. That's a great strategy. And, and that, that is a great strategy. And, and a lot of people do that. I can tell you that I've done that. You know, I've still got about 50 houses and I do that with those, frankly. I'm, I'm well below market. I don't push it just because I'm focused on other things right now. I have other interests besides, you know, uh, real estate. But, uh, you know, so, but most people don't want to do that. I think most people want to ramp and get as much cash flow as they can. But but I I I, I like that strategy personally. Yeah, and, uh, and and like and again for that particular property, I've had that same tenant in there for four years. You know, and he's a good. You right. know, whatever I ask him, you know, he's like, no problems, I'll do it. So 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 that's one thing. But two, when I when I looked at that deal, I realized at pricing under you know market at 10%, I realized that I could have that thing paid off. He could pay it off in eight years. So uh, clearly for me, I'm hello. like, hello, did you guys all hear that? <laughs> I mean, hello, that's what I'm talking about here. And, and you got, who is better positioned to find great real estate deals than the, the people listening in this, than you guys that are listening? I mean, I mean, it, you're perfectly positioned to capitalize on this, and and all it takes. And, I, and I, hey, I know it's scary. Even those of you that are act, you know, that have only acted in a facilitation capacity, I know it can be a little scary, but that's okay. And and that fear goes away once you get some knowledge. And after your first deal, it's gone. But but you know, but you know, learn it. Learn 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 the things that you don't know about investing, and. And then that, then you'll have the confidence, and then just you know start talking to people about partnering on on a deal, you know. And when, but I will tell you, once you find the deal, you'll find the money because if you've got yeah. a screaming deal, and, and wouldn't you agree, Toby? One hundred percent, it's everywhere. And again, like if that 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 agent that had that particular property listed, if they would have brought it to me and said, "Listen, I got this deal, Toby. You know what? I'll 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 put you first in line for it, but I just want twenty percent of it." I probably yeah, would have done right. it. I'll throw in my commission. Right. Give, give me, you know, what, let's say it's 20000 down. My commission's ten grand. Duh, that's half the down payment. Take half the deal. Right. Yeah, right? crazy. Now, of course, you got to disclose, and there's, you know, the legality uh, associated with the fiduciary and all that business, but you can do that. And, and why wouldn't you? I mean, yeah. yeah, I know it's nice to have the cash in your hand, but I'll tell you something. Take it from me. I had a fifty million dollar seminar in in '08 because I didn't focus on cash flow and 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 I hate to have you guys that are listening who who make a ton of money buying and selling I mean uh, buying and selling for other people have something happen in your life and not be able to work you know and so think 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 beyond. This year, I guess, is my is my is my point, because right. every January 1st right now, if you're not investing in real estate, you're just selling real estate, you're going back to work. But if you think beyond and think about your future, think about your retirement, think about security and, and, and build cash flow. I got to tell you, be very glad you did.
So, so what about? I mean, because because the, the the other like for me, I want to I want to own something, right? I'm thinking 10, 15, 20 years down the road, right? That's what how I'm thinking. That's what. And so, like when that deal, I said, okay, it can be paid off in eight years, and all of a sudden, you know, it's easy to do that math. The other kind of cash flow is people going, okay, I get the you know, I put twenty grand down, I get a loan on it, and I'm just I'm two three hundred dollars a month uh, uh, profitable on it. Now, for me, I don't like to do those deals. I won't do those deals. I just don't no, think it's no, worthwhile. No, why would you? No, that doesn't make any sense to put 20 grand down and only cash flow. Th- you know, you've got to look at your return on investment. I mean, what's your what's your cash on cash return? Right. You know, that term is something you'll learn when you when you study this. And so, you know, if it if it's not a, you know, a 20% cash on cash where you have your money back in 5 years, then then why do it? Uh, and and again, you guys are perfectly positioned to find the good deals that will cash flow well and capitalize on them and you know instead of listing them buy them right so um, so i know you're a big a multifamily proponent and uh, so i want to talk to, I, i'm involved with another group right and and that's what we do is is multifamily and i'll tell you our strategy there so number 1 we want to find B properties, right? B or B minus properties, but in A locations. And the, and the notion is we buy a B property, we throw some money in, we fix it up, increase the rents, okay? Right. So, right. so we increase the rents, we, we run it for three years, then we refi the thing and take 30% off the table. So now we own that same asset. Right. right. But but right, with right, only 70 percent right. of what, you know, and sometimes, you know, we can do it and get all our money back. No, right? Absolutely. The goal should be to get it all back. And and that's that's possible. I mean, you know, that's you have a liquidity event where you sell or you refinance. And that's the goal is is to is to, you know, ideally get get the investors all their money back. They're in for no money. It's cash flowing. And if it if the size is large enough, you can even get non recourse debt. I mean, for those of you who don't know what that means, where you're not personally liable. I mean, you're you're in a property, you're safe, you don't have your money in it, and you don't you're not on the hook for the debt, and you're just you're just paying that debt down with cash flow. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, so, you know, I, I mean, I think it's a great strategy. Now, you're gonna have a tough time finding B properties in A areas that make sense I, right now today because there, you know there's a lot of money chasing those deals unless. You know, you're 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 in the sweet spot, which is probably in the fifty to eighty to ninety unit range. If you, if you're over a hundred, there's a lot of money chasing those deals. Hundred units, that is. Yeah. Um, but but they're out there now. See, my criteria really is more C and B areas because I'm, you know, I would love to get B and A areas, but they're just hard to find. And 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 but but see, what's great is again, your listeners are right there in the trenches in this stuff and, and you know, could very likely come across deals and maybe not of that magnitude. Maybe it's just a duplex or a right. fourplex or a 10 unit. And they're like, they, they run the numbers and it, it, it's like the deal you just told me about the guy in Canada where, you know, you can rent it for 2% of what you paid for it. Do it. I mean, you know, Sure, you're gonna have you're gonna have to deal with the management. You know, people say oh, I don't want that leaky faucet call at midnight. Well, you can hire a management company if you want to, right. but you don't get that many calls at midnight if you're if you're you know that's that's a misnomer. Sure, it happens from time to time, but the rewards are worth it. Well, this goes back this goes back to offering that tenant ten percent under market, right? That, that guy that, another, exactly that guy's exactly. not gonna call me at midnight. He, exactly. In fact, he won't even call me about a leaky faucet. He'll take care of it himself. Ex- that's exactly right. And you can even structure the lease that way. It was where the first hundred bucks of any repair is the tenant's responsibility. And you tell the tenant, you know, the reason I'm, I have this in here is because you've got a great deal on this rent and I don't want to be bothered. Unless there's something seriously wrong, don't call me. And, and that's, that there, that's, the, that's the trade-off here for you having this fantastic rent that you know you can't get anywhere else, right? Right. Okay. So there you go. <laughs> well, and, and here, you know, and so, so going back to, you know, those deals, right? And, and, again, and again, for us, we're looking for 100 plus, right? We're looking for ideally for about 300 units, you know, right, a property. Right. But so, but the deal is, right? Those kinds of deals, right? Um, they're not on the market, right? They're not on the MLS. They're not. They're not listed. They're hiding in plain sight. How? How does? And again, let's just talk about the duplex. No, no, you know what they are? Is they're off market because the brokers that have them want to sell them themselves. Okay, and so, but but who better? Who who is whose peers? Are we talking to here? Right. You know, so so guys, develop those relationships with these brokers because uh, you're in the business together and, you know, and put the, put a team together 
and this is the stuff you'll learn if you go through a course, and I can recommend a couple courses later. But but you know, this is the stuff you'll learn about putting the team together, and then put you know put put some investors together. The guy, you know, uh, Mister Mister Investor, this is what I look for. These are the deals I look for. If I find one, do you want me to bounce it off of you? And then you you know you've got to. You've got to do a syndication unless you do a smaller deal and it's just a joint venture. But again, these are things that you have to learn. But it's just it's listen, within a couple of weeks, you can learn this stuff. And then and then you go out and you start kicking tires and looking at deals. So, you know, don't don't get don't get intimidated by it. OK, because, you know, the people a lot dumber than you that are listening that are doing this right okay? right right and i think the other thing is is don't get intimidated by the size of it right so like i right. know that you know so i've had grant cardone on my show i know that you right. have, oh yeah he's 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 amazing he's a good guy <laughs> you know and, and grant you know grant will tell a story you know where he made you know he did a deal and he's like i made 30 million dollars this day and it's because he's like and what he shared with me is like hey these guys are ballers right and and he's like you know what just because they didn't want to take a hundred million dollars or you know Fifty million dollars last month. They might take it thirty million dollars. Th- you know, this month they don't care. You know, so I think it's the same thing with you know a duplex, uh, you know a, a, a fourplex, whatever it is. Right? The, the, there are people out there just go. You know, I'm sick of that fourplex. I'll right. take. They'll leave the equity. They'll they'll walk away right. from the equity. I can tell you, I've personally done it. I did it in Memphis. I sold houses for less than what I paid for them because I just wanted out. And and if, my apologies for those of you that live in Memphis, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> anyway, no, but I'm kidding. But but um, the the you know who's who sees these deals every day. Your listeners. Yep. And that's that's my point. You guys, you see these deals every day. You see, you know, you run across people that have motivation to get out quickly and maybe you can solve their problem without having to list it or maybe you 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 talk to them about putting a deal together um yourself and so you know i i to me um it's it's a no-brainer to your listeners that they should be thinking about this you know i mean certainly they could go out and start a different type of business that cash flows for them to to think about retirement and and building cash flow but but why when they're perfectly positioned to capitalize on real estate well yeah but but what is that i mean what what is that uh, what, like a car wash i mean what kind right. of i mean i don't know what that is Right. Well, I mean, you know, I, I've got another business that does very well. It's a litigation support company, but it's a pain in the ass. And if you're in real estate and you love real estate, I mean, duh, buy, find deals, find, find multifamily deals and, and rent them out and forget about them. And, you know, 10 to 20 years from now, they're free and clear. And you're, you know, like, I had an old Jewish guy tell me 30 years ago, I'll never forget this. I was looking at um, some of his apartments in Denver and they were free and clear. And he was, he was a real character, but he told me one thing. He said, son, I see what you're trying to do. You're going to buy property. I, he said, when your property is free and clear, you will have buckets of money. And I never, that phrase never left me, buckets of money. So guys, go out there and buy some real estate, get it paid off, and you will have buckets of money. And for everybody listening out there, if you find a deal, show it to me, right? If you don't know any other <laughs> investors, bring it to me. I'll take a look exactly, at it for sure. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, same here, same here. I'm on that bandwagon too. Good now, for you. L- let me ask you this, Rod. Um, one, th- you know, I, cause, cause, cause of what I do, I do see deals everywhere, right? And I don't, I'm in San Diego, right? There are no deals here, right? I mean, they, right. oh, yeah, there's none. Tough. That's a, That's where Cardone bought his first one, I think, is, I think he said that. Uh, he, he bought a big, oh yeah, I don't, I don't know. But, but so, so, you know, you're in Florida, Cardone's in Florida. I actually know a guy, um, who is the, from Jacksonville to Orlando. He is, he gets the first look of all the Fannie Mae, Deals. He gets wow. first look at those. Now, I've seen some of them, and they're good. And some of them, or many of them, already have tenants in them. I'm. I've never done. Personally, I've never done that outside of my group. Right. I've never bought a single family or a duplex outside of the area that I know really well. Right. What do you think of of buying property across the country? Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do small property like that across the country. And uh, you know, and I got that memo from my Memphis experience because even though I had a, an infrastructure of 200 houses, it was still a stepchild. And I would not do small property across the country. In fact, I wouldn't do small property anywhere but in your backyard. Uh, now I know that you know there are some programs out there. This um, 
uh, 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 turnkey, the turnkey programs where, where you know, uh, there are these guys that are flipping houses and markets and offering turnkey properties to investors. The only thing I would say about those are the, the profits been taken off the table by the guys that are offering the turnkey properties. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, no, I, I would not do anything smaller than, God, I want to, I, I mean, I actually considered uh, a 24 unit that was four hours away, but that was that was a stretch for me too. I I think the smallest you should be in the 50 to 70 unit range, especially if you're going to be a plane, you know, a, a day travel away. Right. Uh, so okay. that's that's my two cents on that one. I I, you know, and 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 guys, those of you listening, if you're mar- in your market, there will be deals. Even I, I got to be honest, Toby. Even in San Diego, if there's a broker in San Diego that's out there targeting sellers and talking to sellers he's gonna stumble across a deal once in a while and and my advice is even if it's a single family buy it uh yep. you know that's well, that's just my you know, yeah no so. i agree and and look and the, and, the, and the thing that you know there there are deals everywhere that pop up because of right the three d's right death divorce right. disease right it happens right and right and, and right. you know and you know whether you feel that that's Bad to capitalize on those issues or not? I don't know. I, I'm well. No, fine with- I, you don't capitalize. Oh, 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 no. I mean, those people need help, right? They exactly. Need right. Out, need out right away. You're that's a win win. That's not a win lose. You're not taking advantage of them if they need out right away. You know, and you can offer that to them instead of marketing on the open market with with the with a wing and a prayer that it may or may not sell. I mean, hey, you're helping. That's not that's not taking advantage. No, I I so, agree. I'm I'm in the same mindset as you. I just there are people who, and I think you know what I think it's those people honestly who who feel like oh you know you took advantage of that person i think it's those people that that don't have any money don't have any opportunity and they hate to see guys like you and me win and and yeah. that they apply there, some kind of negative. always yeah and there's there's always people that will justify their position for whatever but you know i mean and but i will say this you guys are going to know if you're taking advantage of someone or if you're if you're you know it, just uh taking advantage of an opportunity not taking advantage right. of a person and and there's a difference, and and you've got to live with your integrity. And I can tell you, I, I can I could just a deal popped in my head just right now as I was thinking about it, where I where I I crossed the line, and and I was I'm embarrassed when I think about it. And you know what, you got to live with that. So you know, karma's a bitch, and and so be careful there. Don't 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 do a deal where where you know um, where you where you um, forego your integrity because it'll haunt you your whole life. And and so. You know, there, there you go. There you go. All right. Yeah, so let's so. so let's talk about the contraction because you know where 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 money is made, right? Where fortunes are made are in the downturns. Oh, and with crisis comes opportunity. Yeah. Absolutely. And and I will tell you, I'm not a I don't study macroeconomics, so I can't speak from my knowledge of economics. I can tell you, I've interviewed. I interviewed my first interview was a billionaire on my podcast with thirty five thousand apartments, and this was. You know, a few months back, and he told me that he's the first one that said, "Hey, there's a contraction coming. It won't be as bad as a wait, but it's coming." So I, I you know, when somebody that kind of money says something, you listen. Uh, Grant Cardone feels the same way. You know, he, he said, you know, he said the same thing. Um, I, I interviewed a, another guy uh, named Scott Shield, who's got a few hundred million dollars worth of real estate. Uh, by the way, also has a great course. Uh, those of you that are thinking about getting a course, but but he, you know, he said the same thing. There's 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 a contraction coming, and and so you well, know, it's well, going to well, happen. Hold on. Gonna I, happen. Yeah. Yeah, so let's talk about that. But well, I just want to so, jump in real quick. To, sure, just, sure. just I'm going to I'm going to support you here. I uh, six months ago I was in New Orleans. I went to the Keller Williams family reunion. Right, twenty thousand agents there. Oh, um, cool. The first keynote was Gary Keller. Gary Keller got up on the stage, and the first sentence out of his mouth was, "Winter is coming." Uh, yeah, see, uh, uh, Tony Robbins says the same thing. Winter is coming, and, and that's okay because if if you if if you're prepared, you know, and you've got some cash, you know, the big money that I know of right now is stockpiling cash, and getting ready for this thing, and myself included. And you know, with crisis comes opportunity, and so. You know, there will be some great deals. You, that's not to say you can't find great deals right now as long as you focus on one thing, and that's cash flow. Forget value. Don't even think about value. So, uh, you know, uh, if, you're, if you're one of these guys that's listening, maybe, you're, maybe you flip houses occasionally, I would give you another word of caution. Do not be doing it in the high-end market. 
because have a second exit strategy. Uh, since we're talking about the contraction, if you're in the if you're in the if you're in a market that's that's you know in the I don't know what I, I don't want to put dollar amounts but say two to four hundred thousand dollar range, you're probably fine because as long as you don't have real short term debt. If, uh, because when the contraction happens, as everybody knows, it's been through it. I've been through several. You, d- financing dries up, and so you know everything grinds to a halt. So if you can't sell, you better be able to rent. And and so just th- what I would say to people is go with both eyes wide open and make sure you think about that. You know, even even the I'm sorry. Let me add one sure. thing. To forget even your. A, you know, buying a B property in an A area like you guys want to do, I would say the same thing applies there because if when or when this contraction happens, if you've bought your B property and, I, you know, most of the people I talk to say there will not be a cap rate expansion. And for those of you who don't know what that means, you know, cap, probably do know what that means. It's, it, you know, a lot of most all commercial properties valued using a cap rate, which is a multiple of the net operating income. But if cap rates go up, Values go down, and so mo- although, and that's called a cap rate expansion. And and most of the people I've talked to said that's likely not going to happen. But if it did, then you wouldn't be able to refinance your money out, or you know, have a liquidity event. And if you've got short term debt, like five year debt, then you could have a you could have a situation. So something to think about, even for those of you thinking about getting into larger deals. Um, you know, ideally, I wouldn't do five year debt right now. I would try to get seven or eight or whatever and that's and it's still and that that debt is out there so okay so 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 the smart money stock stockpiling cash i mean right. w- what do they do are, are they are they you know are they taking some of their you know should i take some of my rentals and sell them off now what, yeah, that's, what, that's what that's what i'm hearing i mean I, I i belong to a group of uh guys that are real big in the retail space and uh we meet four times a year and uh they're all multimillionaires in in strip centers and they are they are all testing the market, meaning they are putting their properties on the market to see if they'll sell. And many of them are selling and they're holding on to that cash in anticipation of a contraction. Interesting. So, yeah. So, you know, again, they're, but they're all buying too. They're still looking at deals. Okay. There, there, there are deals out there. So, you know, they're not like grinding their business to a halt, but they are trying to build up cash. What do you think? What do you think? Because uh, you know, you, you said don't play in the high end, right? So again, here, I'm applying that. Well, to I, I mean, I, I wouldn't say don't do it. I would just say if you're gonna do it, ideally have a second exit strategy, or make sure you got both your eyes wide open in anticipation of what could go wrong. Okay, the, l- l- let me bring up this dynamic and just see if you have any thoughts on it, right? So, so. The deal is student loans, right? Student, every, the, 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 the millennials right now entering the market, we are seeing that, that overall those people are, because of high student loan debt, they are not entering the market and buying homes. They're renting homes. And that may be, there's, there could be some other you know, issues or, or reasons for that. But because there's a lack of first-time buyers, there is a problem with, People being able to to sell their starter home and then move up, right? There's this, there's this gap there, right? So so it seems like the money that that you know it, it is in the high end, and those people are a little more insulated to uh, to the downturn. So with number one, do you have any thoughts on that? And two, um, does that have any uh, implications in, in where you would deploy cash? Well, I, I got I. I I'll have to be honest. I'm not. I don't play in that market okay. anymore. I don't play in that in, in the single family market Got anymore. It. So what you just told me, I was not aware of. I didn't realize that that starter homes were challenged in my market here. Uh, the, the 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 starter homes are flying off the shelf. In fact, that's the only that's the only demographic that's doing well here in Florida. So I, I do not. I mean, in Sarasota, in my specific market, uh, I don't know. I can't speak to the whole state. So okay. yeah, I, no, I, 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 okay. I couldn't answer that one. Okay. Um, so, so arm yourself with knowledge, get some confidence, go find a deal. Yeah, by find by the way, and I forgot to mention this to you before we, st- uh, you started taping, uh, and that is, um, I actually am writing a book about multifamily cash flow investing. I will give it to your listeners for free if they want it. It's going to be really good. I will tell you, but I'm still probably three months out. So if you'd like to offer it up, you can, uh, it's up to you, but well, uh, you just did. No, that's great. Okay, that's great. Okay, Where, I mean, yeah. we, normally we do this at sort of near the end. We'll, we'll, we'll uh, yeah, no, no worries. So, I, I apologize. So, just, just for, I keep forgetting to mention it and i and i thought i'd mention yeah it. no we'll 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 tell we'll you'll yeah we'll cover that in a All second right. so no speaking of books rod um you know uh, i always ask for book recommendations so 
you know, typically this, here's the setup, right? I'm an aspiring agent. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy? In this case, right? I'm, a, I'm, I'm an aspiring investor. I have 25 bucks. What book should I go buy today, Rod? Well, I'll tell you, it's funny. I, I, was, I was a little down in the dumps and uh, I read this book, I don't know, se- seven years ago, maybe it was called Make It Big by a guy named Frank McKinney. Hmm. And, uh, and, I, and I just interviewed him. He's like a hero to me because this guy, he, he um, started buying and selling houses. Now he does like 30 to 40 million ho- dollar houses on spec. Okay, so he builds a house without a buyer. Okay, uh, and but what I what what I'm so impressed with about this guy is that he's built homes for ten thousand people in Haiti, and you know, giving back is is a big part of my life. And the guy's just a rock star. And the book is fantastic. It's called Make It Big by Frank McKinney. Highly recommended. It really it I pulled it back off the shelf again uh, a few months ago uh, because I wanted a, a a little boost. And it's just got like 49 life lessons in it. And it's very easy to read. A very, very good book. And and I looked him up then and realized what he was doing philanthropically. And was just blown away by the guy. And I reached out and I actually paid him $3,000 just to go meet with him for a couple of hours because I was so impressed by the guy. And and uh, then I've had him on my podcast since then. But, uh, yeah, well, bro, it, it, look, so you bring up two things. So number one, everybody, if you want to get that book, right, Make It Big by Frank McKinney, just right. get a copy on us. Go to use our link audibletrial.com slash Super Agents Live and get a free copy of that. Now, the second thing that, that you said that was really interesting, Frank, I'm sorry, Rob, Frank. You said Rob. free copy. No, no, you won't get a free copy. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. If they use our link and, and sign up for Audible, they'll Audible give them a free copy. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Okay. So, so, but the, 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 the interesting thing that, so this guy's been your hero and you have a podcast and you were able to, right, you had to give him three grand to meet with you one-on-one. However, you... Uh, yeah, that, that was actually before I had the podcast. Well, I know. Well, okay. here, there's but, my point. There's my, and this is something you don't know. So we have an arm called Viralcast. We, it's a podcast production company that we encourage everybody to start their own podcast. And I think right that story right there is such a great story of why everybody should have a, their own show, right? You have a hero. You have a show. Bang. You get to spend an hour with them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we have the book. Um, um, what, what, you know, we covered a, 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 you know, we kind of just, this has been a wide ranging conversation. What, in terms of investing, what should we have talked about? What should I have asked you, Rod, that I didn't ask you? Um, about investing? Or about whatever. What, I mean, I, 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 I will tell you, and, and I touched on it with, the, with when you asked me about the book with Frank Bikini. The, if, you, if you guys aren't giving back in some fashion, that truly is one of a basic human need that every human being has is the is is the need to help other people and if you're not giving back trust me you you need to because it comes back to you like you hear it's cliche it comes back to you tenfold but it really does okay so uh, incorporate that into your life guys help other people even if it's just making it a point to smile to everybody you meet that day but if you can help people financially help them financially if you can help them with your knowledge your skill set help them that way but you've got to incorporate that into your life so that's the one thing we didn't cover and that to, is just a big piece of my life well i mean let's talk about that a little bit because okay. because I, i'll tell you I'll, t- I'll tell you two stories when i was in college i had a house painting company and i wanted to get press right i wanted to make a splash so i found this like child like um like we're homeless kids right where they don't have families right they don't it that's where they lived and right. I, it was in downtown san diego it was all run down and i talked to those guys and i said hey you know can i get some of my friends together can we paint this thing i said of course absolutely that's great so then i go to the i go to the paint companies right for z out here and i said you know will you donate paint so i do, i get paint donated we're, we're all set up i go down there and and I, I have a crew of like 15 guys we're gonna we're gonna do something great for these people I roll up and I assumed that they, they would want to help themselves. Like, hey, what can I do to help you guys? They felt they, I walked in that room and, and, I, and I got the sense like they felt entitled. They felt like, you know, and I and I, I got such a creepy feeling from it. I wanted to quit. I felt like, you know what? The, I'm not going to do this for you. Like you don't even appreciate it. And so mm-hmm. so that's one story that I that the uh, experience that I've had to fight. That's a shame. I hope that hasn't jaded you to this. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. Okay, good. And good. and uh, however. However, this this second one a little bit has right, and, and here's the thing. So every around Christmas, you know, we'll take you know I, with my kids. I have three kids, right? We'd give them a thousand bucks. We go, hey guys, 
let's you know you find some place to give this back so so i think oh, that's I, awesome joe that's awesome toby I'm, that's that's really impressive well yeah so so my daughter found th- some organizations like these inner kids right these kids are in need so we go and go what do you guys need you know what they wanted they're like give us gift cards and i'm like that's not right that's not like mm-hmm. in the spirit of what i want to do so so how does uh, number, have you ever heard this? Can I, can, yeah, and let me let me speak to it, okay? okay? Because I, I let me give you a, a thirty seconds on my story, okay? I uh, in two thousand, uh, I decided to feed five families, okay? Found called the church, found found five families that really needed, it. and I got the idea from Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins some, does something called the Basket Brigade, and he's fed fed millions of families. So I, I did a Basket Brigade with five families. Went to one of the families. The, the mom came out of the house. This was a shotgun kind of house. For those of you that have seen really old houses, this is a house. You walk in the living room. You walk through the bedroom to get to the kitchen that has the bathroom off the kitchen. That's a shotgun. She had five kids. She comes out. She sees the food, starts crying. Five kids come out. They all start crying. I was hooked. Since then, I've fed 40,000 kids in the last 16 years for the holidays with baskets of food. I've done thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies for kids. We're doing on August 6th, we're doing 1,500 kids with, that, with backpacks filled with school supplies. It's, it's astounding to me that they're kids that don't have the basic essentials to go to school. I've also given thousands of teddy bears to lo- the local police departments here for their officers to keep in their cars for when they encounter a child that's experienced a traumatic event. But let me tell you, about what you just described. And I will tell you that, and I've seen this as I've delivered gifts to families. Some people, first of all, some people are very entitled, no question. They've, they've, they've been on the duel for a while, and it's very frustrating when you encounter that. Also, some people have a very difficult time accepting charity. They, they do, it's very uncomfortable for them mm. so that you can encounter that as well. But that should not stop you from doing it. And, and so, you know, it, 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 that's 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 all you know that's that's my response to your negative experience um and it's unfortunate that you had that because uh, i will tell you there's, there's such a huge need for help out there in on in all kinds of different areas from elderly people to to you know uh, homeless people um to you know children i mean just astounding to me uh, how many children need help so yeah you know that's so, that's that's, that's the, the, that's a great story. Okay, so let's let's again. Um, so charity um, or or give back, um, and I think I think you know being uh, incorporating gratitude in our lives will help us. Absolutely. To, um, all right, man. Well, listen, uh, I appreciate you taking time out of your busy day. No, um, ab- abs- absolutely. And uh, let me just uh, say this: you know, if um, if your listeners want that book, they can just text uh, Rod at. Uh, uh, ROD at four one four one one, and I'll put you on the list. Now, don't hold me to the to the you know sixty ninety days. It could take me four months to get it finished, but it'll be very very good, and it's free. I don't sell anything, period, on my podcast or through this book. So, and my podcast. Do you mind if I mention that? Absolutely not. Okay, it's it's lifetimecashflowpodcast.com dot com, and we talk about multifamily real estate investing. And you know, if those of you that are thinking about it, love to love to have you join us. And I also do a segment on there that that you 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 may find interesting it's called your driving force success tip where i talk about the psychology of success and you know 80% of success in anything is your psychology and only 20% is the actual mechanical knowledge so yeah. you know there's some value there too but I really appreciate you having me on the show, buddy. It's been a lot of fun. I like your energy. Yeah, well, you too. I mean, you're 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 a super energetic guy. And I'll say this, everybody: look, if you've gotten anything out of today's episode, do two things: one, reach out to Rod and say thanks; but two, uh, you know, starting a podcast is hard. So if you could go and give him a rating and review, that would help. Yeah, yeah. Rod. Thanks, man. Thank you, buddy. See All you. right, take Talk care. Soon. See you. This show is produced by me, Toby Salgado, with help from our research team and production done by ViralCast. If you're building a team and want to make sure you're doing it the most efficient way, reach out to Corker and Coaching. They coach 83 of the nation's top producing teams, and for our listeners, they'll give you a free business evaluation. Send an email to Bubba at CorkerandCoaching.com and let them know I told them told you guys to call. Let's go!